December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. With nothing but the Pacific Ocean separating the two nations, it seemed only a matter of time before America's west coast became Japan's next target. America's defense, as well as the Allied war effort in Europe, depended on the American Air Force. All five of the country's largest aircraft manufacturers stood just a few minutes flying time from the Pacific coast. It would take months to move these vital factories to safer locations. In response to the crisis, the military came up with a brilliant yet unusual solution. Everything valuable to the American war effort, from airfields in San Diego to factories in Seattle, had to disappear. This was Operation California. Two years earlier, American operatives had spent time in Britain during the Blitz. As German bombs pounded towns and cities, British military planners had built starfish sites, empty decoy towns designed to lure German bombers away from populated areas. So if there's something that the Luftwaffe would see and think that's, that's a useful target, it's covered up with camouflage. And they recruit thousands of artists to help with this. People who have these skills, they know how to paint, they know how to make things, they know how to disguise things. The US military's plan was to replicate what had happened in Britain with Hollywood film studios, to make factories and airfields vanish by disguising them as suburban neighborhoods. In early 1942, West Coast America came alive with creative fervor as teams of painters, set designers, engineers, and carpenters worked together. Air bases could be disguised under paint and camouflage netting, but huge urban factories required deception on a far greater scale. Boeing's Plant 2 in Seattle covered 165,000 square meters. To disguise the factory, the deception team used 91,000 meters of timber to create a vast neighborhood, which became known locally as the Boeing Wonderland. Carpenters built wooden scaffolding that ran for kilometers along the rooftops of the factory, its terminals and hangars. Thousands of meters of canvas and chicken wire stretched across the scaffolding, painted to look like farms, fields, and roads. The sloping roofs of hangars were turned into hillsides. The factory's tallest chimneys disappeared inside sheds and fire hydrants. Prop designers made dummy shrubs, houses, and cars to sit on top of the canvas. Everything down to the last detail was made to look real. The fake trees had chicken feathers spray-painted green to look like leaves. Clotheslines hung across fake yards and smoke furled from fake chimneys. The streets even had signs and names. Synthetic Street ran perpendicular to Burlap Boulevard. Many of the rooftop houses were just a few feet high, as they only needed to deceive potential enemy bombers flying high above. From the skies, Plant 2 perfectly resembled a Seattle suburb, but underneath its camouflage, 30,000 men and women worked, producing two B-17 Flying Fortress heavy bombers each day. 34 American air bases and factories soon disappeared. So effective was this trickery that US pilots on training flights frequently got lost without these familiar landmarks. Under this ingenious camouflage, the American aircraft manufacturing industry ramped up and became what President Roosevelt dubbed an arsenal of democracy. Manufacturing in the United States was incredibly important to the eventual victory in World War II. If you look back at 1941, the United States had a total of two or 3,000 airplanes. By the end of the war, this had grown to 300,000 airplanes. The magic trick gave the United States its aircraft production industry what it needed above all, the gift of time. Hollywood and the US military vanished America's valuable targets using a combination of camouflage and cunning. <laughs> 